relief is just beginning to describe how people here were feeling. Absolute joy, I think, uh, might be particularly his mother, Penny, who this morning re remained optimistic. She was talking about her son being extremely resilient. And boy, was he almost tw uh, 48 hours from when he got separated when, from his family. They were here on Monday afternoon. Uh, they'd been taking a walk and he just disappeared. They say he's uh, pretty quick on his feet and he was found barefoot. But uh, uh, let's have a listen in to what his mum had to say as she was uh, just after she was reunited with him this afternoon. I am really overwhelmed. He is well and um, as you know, they expected, I guess, under the circumstances. Um, he, you know, he's quite calm considering um, he's just used Prolo Quo to go to um, initiate, um, to tell us that you know, he's confused and he's um, scared and, and he's repressing the body, the body meaning obviously his body feels weird. Um, but more than anything, thank you everyone. I, I'm, no, I'm so grateful. You're all amazing. Um, you know, what an amazing community. So, what more can I say? Yeah, I, I, I want to be with my boys. Oh, it's a moment and, like when you, when you I saw I didn't her. believe it. I just, I, I, you know, I, you know, I can't imagine what he's been feeling and going through. And, you know, he's done. Um, I'm just so grateful and so relieved. Um, he, he's just a very special person and all the people in his life, they love him to be it, you know, and there are some amazing sides to autism. As I said earlier, it is hard, but he's just so special and so we're so privileged to have him in our life. Penny, we're told. What are you guys going to do when life gets a little bit back to normal? I'd like to take him on a holiday. I think he, he hasn't, you know, McDonald's for Oh, his first request was McDonald's. Yeah, I think he wanted hot, salty food. And he, he said, yep. <laughs> Have you had a chance to speak to Ben who found him? Uh, no, I want to thank him. Where is Ben? Does anyone we'll know where Ben is? Someone will find him. Okay, yeah, no, I, I need to. And I think he might be wearing Ben's jacket. So I need to return that to him. Penny, you're amazing. Thank okay. you so much. Thank, thank you, Penny. So that's Penny Callahan, William Callahan's very relieved mother. Karen, do we know where and how he was found? Talk us through that. Well, uh, he was found about an, a minute, a kilometre and a half from here, the staging post, the command post, where all of the emergency services and rescue services have been for the past couple of days. He was about 10 minutes away from the uh, summit and a couple of young women we spoke to who came up this morning determined to, to bush bash and, and find their way and assist here. They said he was only about 100 metres away from the road, but it's so thick. The terrain here is quite extraordinary. It's very difficult to see between the trees at parts and also the thick undergrowth. He was apparently standing up when it happens. But it was a, a local man or a man who uh, grew up in these parts, Ben Gibbs, who says he knew these mountains well. And he's the man who found Will Callahan uh, with his shoes off, but really not very far from here. Let's uh, hear Ben's version of the story today. I was just wandering through the bush and uh, it was quite thick, so I was breaking my way through it. And then he, he was just like about 15 metres from me just standing there. He was really angelic, just, just standing and looking, so, you know. Was uh, he looking at you? Yeah, and, but he was, uh, yeah. And so I just, I heard that he liked Thomas the Tank, and so I just sort of talked to him about Diesel and stuff like that, and Birdie, and said, have you seen Diesel? You know, so stuff like that, you know, just to relax him a bit, I guess. Yeah, some extraordinary work there. Karen, you were saying that the terrain is particularly difficult, the thick undergrowth. This has been such a major search operation. Just talk us through the sense of scale because, of course, it entered its third day today. That's right. It was almost a full 48 hours over three days that people were searching. And today, they, it was in the order of 500 people who were fanned out. They had to they increased the area that they were looking at today because they wondered just how far Will might have wandered. But they were on horseback. They were on dirt bikes. They were in four-wheel drives. They were walking with their dogs. They were bush bashing. And of course, then you had from the air the, the helicopters and the like. It really quite an extraordinary logistical effort. And you can probably start to 
hear, see, see and hear from behind me, they're sort of packing up slowly. But you've got to feed these people. You've got to keep them warm. They've got to be coordinated. So really quite an extraordinary um, effort. And Acting Inspector Christine Lawler admitted uh, she's been overseeing this and she admitted she was quite emotional when she heard about this, as you'd imagine. So much invested, so many people. So let's hear what she had to say uh, after all this was done. William was found safely at approximately 11.55 today. Um, he was approximately 10 minutes uh, walk off the track in uh, bushland. What amazing result. Um, I have so many people to thank. Firstly, the family, um, all the volunteers, uh, Bush Search and Rescue, CFA, SAS, Salvation Army, Ambulance Victoria, all the volunteers. Um, we couldn't have done it without the assistance of everyone. What an amazing community and just goes to show you what can happen, you know, when everyone gets together, pulls together as a team. Um, but particularly thank you also to Search and Rescue who coordinated the search. Um, as you know, you've already seen William. He's being taken to hospital just for observation at this stage. Um, he is alert, warm, eating and drinking. And he actually asked for McDonald's. So. <laughs> great outcome. So thank you to the media as well for your support and assistance. Was it the result you were hoping for? Oh look, amazing. I mean, you know, best outcome we could hope for, um, you know, that William's found safe and well. Um, so yeah, great, great result. How did you feel when you heard? Oh, pretty emotional, um, you know, as everyone was. So um, yeah, great, great outcome. And as I said, Thank you to the community, all the volunteers, everyone that's put in so much time and effort and, you know, a lot of people have put in a lot of long hours, all our volunteers, um, you know, their time's valuable and really appreciate that. So couldn't have done it without the assistance of everyone. Thank you. Sorry, what, what do you think about starting to <coughs> doubt that you would have a good outcome given it had been three days? No, look, we were still, um, you know, we still had hope and, you know, this was the outcome that we hoped for today. So we hadn't lost hope, um, but of course, you know, still great when you find him, you know, alive and well, so really good. How far was he found from where he was last seen? Like, how was that distance like? Uh, not that far, so about one and a half kilometres from here. He was about, I'm told, 10 minutes walk off the track um, in bushland. How do you think he wasn't found sooner? Do you think he moved around? Um, look, that's it's hard to say. Yeah. And was he hiding or taking refuge or anything? Uh, he was just standing up um, when he was found, so yeah. What was he wearing? Obviously he had Ben's jacket on at some stage, but do you know whether he'd taken his shoes off, he'd taken his clothes off? Um, he had taken his shoes off, um, so he's just in his socks. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Oh, so yeah. well. Yeah, it is amazing that he... You know, I know you've all seen him and, you know, he does look remarkably well for the time that he's been out there. A very happy rescue team. Karen, we know that the conditions were near freezing for the last two nights. Talk us through the conditions at Mount Disappointment during the search. Absolutely. Very, very chilly here. It's still pretty cool today, even though we've got a nice sunny Victorian winter day. But uh, that, that's right, the temperatures have been close to zero. Uh, so that young boy really was not particularly dressed. He was dressed for a, a Monday afternoon uh, uh, walk in the woods, not uh, an, a couple of overnight stays. So uh, it's been uh, pretty difficult here. There's also the, the tracks, the roads aren't designed for big, heavy vehicles as we've got here. So uh, that's why you're sort of saw there were motorbikes, there were horses, etc., trying to get into the difficult and different terrain. Uh, pretty muddy around here as well. So definitely challenging conditions to mount a search and rescue of this kind. Yeah, the SES, I think it was yesterday, was saying that it was some of the most difficult conditions that they faced and that the ground, even during the day, had some frozen parts. Yes, I, I'm not sure of that, but I've got to tell you, my feet are pretty cold right now. <laughs> Uh, Karen, what happens with William now? 
Well, he's been taken to hospital just for observation. Everybody seems to think he was looking in pretty good condition and his mum did say he was wanting some McDonald's, something hot and salty, as best he can communicate given his non-verbal autism. But uh, she was also saying this morning that she had a million Tic Tacs. He loves Tic Tacs, so I imagine he might be getting some Tic Tacs as well. But his mum did say also that he was pretty confused and, and didn't really know what was going on or only knew that something um, was going on with his body. And so I guess he'll be trying to figure it out at the moment, but he'll be under observation. Don't know how long for, but I imagine his mum and uh, the family will be very, very keen to get him home as soon as possible. Yeah, I can imagine they would be. Karen, there was such a huge team of volunteers who turned up there. Were you able to speak to any of them after William was found to see how they're feeling? Yeah, there were a couple of young women who were not far away from when Ben Gibbs came across Will Callahan, and uh, they were really absolutely thrilled. They were locals as well. They know they weren't frightened to get in there and kick around in the bush, and they kind of figured that he, he would be inland and that a lot of people were kind of looking along the road, so they decided to go inland as well. So while they weren't right there at the, at the very precise place where Will was found, they weren't too far away, and they were just absolutely thrilled. They were relieved. They were just, you know, talking about about the, the great way this community has come together. They also had a good understanding of what um, someone with Will's condition, his non-verbal autism, would be going through. So they were very understanding that he would not perhaps respond in a way that people might expect. So a huge amount of understanding, empathy, sympathy, and, and I'm guessing maybe uh, love and affection here as well.